Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me and today we are making our 2017 Valentine soap. And so this is a chocolate and roses soap. And as you can see, it's sort of dark chocolate with like a milk chocolatey nougat-y swirly bit in the center. And then it's topped off with some dried rosebuds and a bit of a pink mica swirl. So overall, these things look downright edible, smell fantastic and are perfect for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Unlike many of my soaps, this soap is actually vegan, and that's because it contains a ton of cocoa butter instead of using lard or tallow as the hardening oil. The reason we're including so much cocoa butter is we're actually including it as the way to get that cocoa-y scent. Chocolate Absolute is pretty expensive, so I thought I would let the cocoa butter do the double duty and bring the scent and the hardening in these bars. I use dark cocoa butter in these bars, but if you only have light cocoa butter, that will absolutely work as well. Just make sure that whatever you use smells amazing. It should be the sort of thing where you like open up the tub and you stick your nose in there and your mouth immediately starts to water. That's the kind of cocoa awesome smell that we're going for because that's what's going to carry through to our finished bars. The only part of the soap that you'll sort of have to freestyle is adjusting the chocolatey color to the color that you want. So I used dark cocoa butter and so my batter was dark to start with, but it ended up being a really gross kind of like greenish brown color. So I used a blend of brown and red iron oxides in order to get a nice deep, rich, delicious color. If you used white cocoa butter, your batter is just going to be kind of cream colored. So you're going to have to take it all the way from cream colored to chocolatey colored using iron oxides or even cocoa powder. That part is up to you. Just don't go for super, super dark. Go for just dark enough that it's believably chocolatey because if you get it super, super dark, you might find that this soap can stain lighter colored towels and you know, that's no good. The other scent notes in this bar, other than the chocolate, of course, are rose and vanilla. And these bars smell fantastic. So come on, let's get started. One of the first things you'll need to do is prepare your soap mold. So this is an awesome soap mold that my dad made me and the plans are on the blog. And so I've screwed it all together and lined it with some freezer paper. And so freezer paper is kind of a new thing for me. This is the first time I have tried it in soap making. I usually use parchment paper. Some of my initial impressions about the freezer paper is that I can crease it here, which is awesome. I was able to crease it down on the bottom too, so I should get nicer corners. And it's not so slippery that I can't tape it down, which is great. So I think, I think I'm think i probably pretty sold on freezer paper. And then this is a 1000 gram batch of soap that I'm making. And so this here is 10 inches because in a very true Canadian hodgepodge of the Imperial metric system, every inch of this mold holds a hundred grams of soap, you know, sort of the hundred grams of the oil, but then, you know, plus the water and the lye and everything that you need. So there's that ready and we'll set that aside until we need it. All right, here we have our melted oils and our lye water. And so these have cooled to uh, roughly the same temperature, just a little bit warmer than room temperature. And because there is a bunch of dark cocoa butter in the recipe, these oils look super, super dark. If you don't have dark cocoa butter, you can do this with white cocoa butter and then use some cocoa powder or like a brown iron oxide or something to get that brown color. So now we're going to add our lye water here. You can definitely see it coming to trace quite obviously here with the color difference, which is really neat. All right, we have achieved trace. When I draw my immersion blender over top there, you can see some pretty defined lines forming. So I will grab our little spatula again, and give this a stir. All right, so now it's time to add our clay and our essential oils. So this here is white kaolin clay, and so this is about four tablespoons or roughly 20 grams. And now we're going to add our essential oils. So this here is actually rose fragrance oil. You are of course welcome to use the real thing, but that right there 
was about $400 worth of rose essential oil. So your call. <laughs> and then we're going to add our benzoin here. So benzoin smells a lot like vanilla. And so we end up getting a rose vanilla chocolate scent blend here. And the chocolate comes from the fragrant cocoa butter we included. Now benzoin is really, as you can see, very viscous. So you'll want to put your bottle in a hot water bath so that you can actually pour it out and measure it and get rid of that orifice reducer that comes in them. Those things are useless. They are going to be an orifice eliminator for something as viscous as benzoin. So at this point in time, I'm finding that the color of this soap is kind of gross. It's a lot greener than I thought it would be, so we are going to adjust it with some iron oxides. So I have some red iron oxide and some brown iron oxide, and both of these have been pre-distributed in a bit of castor oil so that they incorporate a bit better. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this and we'll blend away until we actually get a nice sort of rich chocolatey brown color, because right now this is just a very, very unappetizing greenish brown. I'm not sure how well that's coming across on camera, but believe me when I say it's not a nice color. All right, that finally looks like a lovely, appetizing brown chocolate color. And then some of this is going to go into another container. So I've really been enjoying working with these little guys. They've got a nice pour spout and they are nearly invisible on the marble countertop. Um, both Norpro and Fox Foxrun make these, uh, depending on where you live. One is probably cheaper than the other. I know for me, I think it was the Foxrun ones were like seven, or sorry, the Norpro one I think was like $7 and the Fox Run one was like three. So sort of a no brainer. They look identical from what I can see on Amazon. I will link to them in the description box below. All right. So that's about a third to a quarter of the battery here. When I settle it down, it's about 400 milliliters. And so this is gonna be sort of our milk chocolate and then this is gonna be our dark chocolate. You can sort of put this aside for a moment. And in here I have some titanium dioxide that's been pre-dispersed in a bit of castor oil. And so similar to when we adjusted to get the nice chocolatey color, we'll just add like a bit of this and then blend it in and see how it affects the color and stop when I like the color. Right, that is looking deliciously like chocolate mousse. So at this point in time, we are done with our blender. So you can disconnect the blender head from it and then set the motorized part aside. Pull that out and we'll scrape this down. Okay. So this is the end we're pouring in. I'm gonna start with some this and then some this and go back and forth a little bit. And now we're going to do a bit of a hanger swirl. So instead of using a hanger, I'm gonna use one of these. So this is a gear tie, and it's basically a thick piece of wire covered in silicone. So I'm gonna put a right angle in it here and measure across, and then another bend here. Does not have to be perfect, which is good because there's no way it's going to be. So now I have something that I can plunge down and do some swirls. You can definitely do this with a hanger too, um, but you'll get much more noticeable swirls with a thicker 
wire implements. So it can be a good idea to kind of wrap the hanger in something to try to make it thicker than just a hanger. The wire hanger just has very, very little surface area, so it doesn't, doesn't create much drag. So this knocking part is very important because this hanger swirl will have put a ton of air in here. We want to knock as much of that out as possible so we don't have holes in the finished sliced bars. You can see some popping out over here. Now we're going to do some fun little designs on the top. I have a mica here. This is called Kiss Me My Darling, quite fittingly for Valentine's Day, from Yellow Bee. And I've just predispersed it with a bit of castor oil. And I have a toothpick and we're going to do some toothpick swirls. I wanted to pop some rosebuds on the top of it. Now I need to take my gloves off for this part because I just cannot grab these little rosebuds without it. At this point in time, the soap is, it's not very caustic. If you get this soap batter on your skin, it's mildly irritating, but it's, it's certainly nowhere near as dangerous as straight a lye or a, the concentrated lye solution at the beginning is. To sort through these and see what I got. All right. All right, well, at this point in time, all that's left to do is leave our soap to saponify for 24 hours and we can come back and cut it and see how it turned out. So it's been about 24 hours and this has been sitting here saponifying. I left it uncovered and I did not heat it or put it on a heating pad of any variety. So it basically just looked like this for last day. Take apart the mold and take a look. We're going to want to cut this one from the side. You can definitely tell that this was a very thick batter, very thick trace, and I did not quite knock all the air bubbles out. Hopefully it looks a little better than that throughout, but we will find out. So I've gone in and measured this and then marked it out into 12 bars. So we're cutting through the side so that we don't drag the top through the bars. This is already a very, very firm loaf of soap. Definitely don't leave this one to saponify for more than 24 hours. But that's quite a lovely swirl in there. Ooh, excellent. Okay, now let us slice and dice away. And there we have some Chocolate and Roses Valentine's Soap. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe, including the link to the recipe on the blog, which is where you will find links to where to buy all the ingredients and all the instructions written out as well. See you next time.